God, if opportunity should rise up like the sun and shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become, luring hands of compromise could offer wealth and fame, tempting me to turn around, denying Jesus' name. Well, I'd rather be a poor man and have riches in the truth. So without a second thought, let me tell you what I do. I'll take Jesus. were assembled before the throne, singing songs of worship to the Lord alone. As they sang, holy, holy, the heavens filled with glory, but they had to step aside when they heard a song. fell on that place when a sinner felt his grace the saints and angels did rejoice when that child began to
Uh, if you want a songbook, we're going to start off on 301. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight, things that are higher and things that are nobler. These have allured my sight, and this TV's not on. <laughs> Monitor, whatever we're going to call it. Not that I use it, I got a book, see? 301. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I It's a little warm in here, and uh, we are dealing with that. We, <laughs> all right, I didn't even know. Did y'all, who knew it was hot? I didn't know it was hot. Well, she did. She's fanning. Brother Ken's burning up up here, so and I'm getting all the nose. Maybe it's just on this side. Is everybody over here okay? No, I ain't checking his temperature. Sue, Miss Sue said, check, they checked you out there? Yeah. Was it glowing red and flashing and buzzing? <laughs> well, you're not supposed to be in here then. So whoever did it is fired. Well, good to have you in church tonight, except for what all just took place right here. Uh, we're glad that you're here. Let's pray. Ask the Lord to meet with us. Don't forget to pray for the teens, and don't forget to pray for the children out in the gym, that the Lord will speak to them in their services as well. And uh, pray for folks around the country meeting tonight, and those who are trying to, and having to meet outside, do all that all of that stuff. Not only that, but then churches around the country who are dealing with uh, COVID. We, you know, we have had our experience, and there are other churches just now getting theirs, and it's a stressful time. And so try and think about that and pray for them as well. Miss Scott, if you'd just play softly. I said it slowly because I hadn't looked to see for sure who was playing. So, uh, Miss Scott, if you'd go ahead and play. Let's pray. Thanks for being here tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we're able to be here. Thank you for health and strength and I was on the phone with Miss Dorothy Yarborough, Lord, and she faithfully attends through live stream and has now for several years because they're just not able to come. And she loves church and she'd love to be here. So help us not to uh, take it for granted that we are physically able to be here. And help us not to take it for granted that we are legally able to be here and that we're able to meet together in person tonight. And we remember back when I was preaching from the bedroom and people were all watching from their houses. And we thank you for that technology that helps and is even helping some tonight. But Lord, we thank you so much that we can be here in your house and be together with your people. Open up your word. And we pray that we'd feel your spirit in this place tonight. Help us as we sing and not just uh, go through it, uh, Lord, 
ritualistically, but Lord, that we would focus on what we're saying and we would sing it from our heart. Be with the special singing that is to come. Help me in the, the lesson tonight that you would encourage us and challenge us through the Word of God. Lord, I do ask you to bless the teens up on the hill. Be with Brother Jason as he runs that service. Brother Charlie and the children, little giants out at the school. Be with them. And Lord, help all the other churches around the country. Touch the ones that are meeting in places where it's very difficult, not only in America, but around the world all the time. Lord, there are people that have to hide to have church. So I pray that you'd bless them. We thank you for their faithfulness. We thank you for their love for you, their example to us. Help us to, uh, Lord, learn from them and love them. Help us to pray for them. Lord, bless everything that's said or done in here tonight, that it'd be pleasing to you and that it'd be a help to your people that are here. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's sing another song. 371, I must tell Jesus. Think about this, we'll come and pray in just a few minutes. 371, I must tell Jesus. some uh, prayer requests when we come to the altar. Do to remember to pray for these folks, please. Um, Brother Tony has been mentioning Brother Rick DeMichael. Uh, I'll be praying for him as uh, he has been, of course, he had cancer years ago and uh, been very sick lately. And uh, so we ask the Lord to watch over him. And then, uh, let's see here, Brother uh, Crendel Edwards' dad with his heart surgery going to be on Friday. Uh, pray that that goes uh, smoothly. And then for Brother Neil's mom, as uh, she's going to be having surgery tomorrow, uh, uh, Linda, be praying for her. And then uh, Brother uh, John Jenkins' grandson, uh, Hudson, that has uh, had a tumor, and well, multiple tumors, and be praying for him that the doctors would have wisdom how to help this uh, little guy. And then also for Brother Tyler Manick, pray that he gets good results uh, from his tests uh, tomorrow, as he has been uh, fighting leukemia for a 
couple of years, I guess. Pray that he gets a good results tomorrow. And then uh, Miss Kayla asked us to be praying for her stepdad. Of course, we would uh, mentioned a while back that he has been uh, diagnosed with cancer, and he went in for a scan yesterday or today, and then ended up having to have an emergency surgery. Uh, so be praying for him as he is uh, having a real hard time. Uh, some good news, uh, Megan... Wagner got a clean uh, bill of health with her blood test, so that is a blessing. Uh, so that is uh, really good news there. And then uh, for the, uh, just a little information about the church in Myanmar, uh, they have uh, got started on uh, a fence. They said, if we don't put up a fence, all our building material will get stolen. Uh, so they've been sending me pictures of the fence they got up, and they're excited about that. Amen. It's like building it in Stumptown, ain't it, Miss Kelly? Better... You better put a fence around it if you want to keep it, praise God. Well, we want to praise the Lord for the good revival. Been hearing good reports all week. Different folks texting, talking about what the Lord did in their heart. So we thank the Lord for that. Also, I want to praise the Lord for the good uh, time dedicating the Burleson building Sunday afternoon. I thought it was a uh, blessed time, very precious time. So we thank the Lord for providing uh, for that and giving us the ability to finish that building. And uh, I want you to pray for the Gilstrap family. Miss Gilstrap taught at our school for many years. Her husband, Brother Jerry, passed away. And they're having the funeral tomorrow, receiving friends from 1 to 2, the funeral at 2 at Westmoreland. And so if you'd pray for the Gilstrap family, Brother, J Brother uh, Jerry's a good man, and he's in a good place now, no doubt about it. Also, I want you to be praying for... Um, a lady named Catherine from the church in New Jersey who is dealing with COVID and really having a hard time, actually on a ventilator. We want to see the Lord touch her. So if you think of it, pray for Catherine. And then I have heard several reports that Autumn Care has just really got a lot of cases right now. And so pray for the folks that are there living and then also the folks that are there working. So pray about that. Pray for the people in charge. I'm telling you, it'll, it'll uh, fry your brain trying to make decisions and things like that. So pray for them. And then don't forget to be praying for our bus service on Sunday evening. First time we've had the bus kids back on the property this coming Sunday. They're going to go out, I think, 1 o'clock or 1.30 or something like that. Going to take the buses out, pick them up, and bring them back here to the property, have one service with them, and then uh, take them back home. Just pray that that goes well, number one. Pray for, obviously, uh, nobody to get sick. We don't want that. And then most of all, we want the Spirit of the Lord, wanting to touch the hearts. If there's a lost uh, bus kid that comes, we want to see them get saved. So pray, Brother Joel, I think, will be doing the preaching. Is that right, Brother Roy? So Brother Joel will be doing the preaching. So pray about that, if you would. A couple more. Miss Dina is getting ready to uh, go on Monday for a medical test, and they're actually afraid there could be a tumor, could be some cancer. And so she wanted us to pray that it would not be that. And then uh, I want you to continue to pray about the Supreme Court nominee, as I think any day now they're going to start doing uh, the, the, the hearings in the Senate to try to see if they can get her uh, approved. And so I want you to pray about that. We need the Lord's intervention on that, okay? Let's take a few minutes and pray. Miss Scott will play. You can come to the altar, take some time. Be sure and praise the Lord for His goodness, and then pray for these many needs that we've mentioned. Father, we do want to thank you, Lord, for the good revival services we had last week, Lord, and what a blessing all that preaching was, and uh, the, the singing, Lord, and just uh, great services, Lord, with uh, uh, just our church here, Lord. Thank you for being good to us. Lord, thank you for some of the answers to prayers that we have had recently, Lord. I pray that, uh, I want to thank you, Lord, that uh, Megan Wagner got a good report, Lord. Thank you that uh, her blood work came back clear as they were uh, still very concerned uh, about uh, some things. I thank you, Lord, that she got a good report. Um, thank you, Heavenly Father, that we were able to dedicate the Burleson building this Sunday. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we're going to be able to start using that for Sunday school. And then as soon as the uh, uh, special citizens are able to come back, Lord, that they will have a brand new facility where they can meet. And I just pray, Lord, that you would continue to uh, bless the special citizens, even as they're not able to come right now. I pray, Lord, that uh, soon they will be able to. I ask that you'd watch over them. Thank you, Lord, for the progress that's uh, going in Myanmar with uh, Pastor Stephen and the church uh, that they're going to be building over there. I just ask that you continue to bless them. And, uh, Lord, I pray you'd watch over Miss Kayla's stepdad as 
Uh, he has uh, been fighting cancer, Lord, and then all of a sudden had to have emergency surgery uh, for some gangrene, Lord, and it's very serious. I pray that you'd watch over him. And uh, Lord, I pray for Miss Donna uh, Wilson's uh, stepdad, uh, David Wheeler. I pray, Lord, that you'd watch over him as he is uh, not doing very well. Ask God that you would uh, please give the doctors wisdom and how to help him uh, however they can. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would uh, be with him as he is fighting this. I pray, Lord, that you'd please comfort him and the family uh, with the hardship that he's going through, Lord. And also, Lord, for uh, uh, Brother Rick DeMichael, Lord, as I know that he is uh, very sick, I just ask the Lord that you would have mercy on him, Lord. I know that he's got a weak immune system, Lord, from uh, fighting, uh, I think it was leukemia years ago. I ask God that you would uh, be with him and heal him up, Lord, as a great preacher and a great pastor that he is. I just pray that you'd watch over him. And Lord, thank you that uh, Brother Tyler uh, Manick has got a good report uh, so far and that tomorrow he's going to be getting some more results back. I pray, Lord, that you'd give him another good report tomorrow. I ask God that you would uh, continue to bless him and be with him, Lord, and thank you for uh, the Christian man and the family that he ha is and has. I ask God that you'd continue to uh, be with him. Lord, watch over Brother Neil's mom. Uh, she's going to be having surgery tomorrow. I pray that Linda would have a uh, simple, uh, I mean, no surgery is simple, but let her have a good report uh, when it's all said and done, that everything went smoothly. And Lord, watch over Brother John Jenkins' grandson, Lord Hudson, as I know that he's been, uh, had a surgery to take out a tumor, but yet he has several more, Lord. And I just pray that you would uh, help the doctors to help this little guy, Lord. I think he's seven or something like that. Just pray that you'd watch over Hudson and watch over the whole family, uh, that uh, you would uh, bring them closer to you, Lord. And I just pray that uh, you would uh, help Brother uh, Crendel's dad as he's going to be having surgery on Friday, help that open heart surgery to go smoothly as they replace the valve. And I pray, God, that uh, uh, there'll be no complications there as I know that he's got some other health issues. And I pray that none of that uh, would uh, flare up. Or watch over Miss Dina. She's going to be having uh, some uh, tests on a tumor. And I pray, Lord, that those tests come back uh, negative to cancer, Lord, as they are uh, concerned about that. Just give her a good report, Lord, as uh, you've done that many times for many people. And I just pray that you'd calm her nerves as uh, I know she's anxious about that. And Lord, for the ones that were at Autumn Care, as they are uh, really facing an outbreak of uh, COVID, Lord, I pray that you'd watch over the ones that are living there. Uh, keep them uh, healthy. And Lord, for the ones that are working there, trying to deal with uh, the whole issue, Lord, as it uh, this pandemic is obviously worldwide, Lord, and people dealing with it in all, all different situations, Lord. And I just thank you for how that you have watched over us, Lord, and, and kept our uh, church uh, safe. Uh, and, uh, majority, Lord, and I know that you've watched over the school, and I thank you, Lord, for that. I just pray, God, that you would uh, help us, Lord, to continue to have uh, wisdom, to trust in you, Lord God, as you are uh, what gives us safety. You are the thing that protects us, Lord, and I just pray that we would have wisdom in these areas, but at the same time, realize that you're the one uh, that watches over us, God. And God, for Catherine up in New Jersey, who has COVID, is on a vent, I pray, Lord, that you'd be with her and help her to recover from that. Lord, bless Miss Gilstrap, Lord. I remember several years ago going out and uh, caroling for uh, Brother Jerry. And uh, what a blessing he was to us, Lord God. We were trying to be a blessing to him, and he ended up blessing me, Lord, just uh, standing and talking with him for a few minutes. And Lord, thank you that he is in heaven, Lord. And we know that, and thank you, Lord, that uh, he's not suffering anymore. And I just pray, uh, pray for uh, Miss Gilstrap, Lord, that you'd watch over her and comfort her. And uh, just ask God that you'd be in the service this evening, Lord. Bless Brother Tony and uh, uh, bless Brother Charlie with the little giants and uh, Brother Jason with the teenagers. Just pray for your Holy Spirit to be here, Lord. We just love you. Thank you for your goodness. In Christ's name, amen. All right. Just give you a couple announcements here. We are going to have the um, trunk or treat candy on Sunday. The Tony's truck's going to be parked out here. And so we're excited to see how full the truck bed will be after Sunday. So um, we made a church call the other day about that. Let's try and make sure you pick up some candy. That'll be a help. I'll try and give you a couple more announcements. My voice is just about shot. <clears throat> I've been yelling at my wife, so no, I'm not really. Um, 
Also, the ladies' class this coming Sunday, Miss Krause, is that right? Meeting in the Burleson building. So, ladies, um, looking forward to that and uh, going to be a blessing over there, I believe. Also, our regular Sunday school classes, the other six that have been meeting, uh, will continue to meet on Sunday morning. And be faithful, please, to give your tithes and offerings. That'll be a blessing. One last thing today is Miss Patsy Paget's birthday, right back there. So, praise the Lord. And happy birthday to you, sister. And. Um, Somebody said you're either 39 or I'm not sure what the other number is, but we'll go with 39. So praise the Lord. So hope you have a great day today, Brother Tony. Did you make her a cake? Me personally? Yeah. No, I did not. If he did, you better just feed it to somebody else. I can tell you that. Praise the Lord. Well, happy birthday. That's funny. I heard yesterday was Brother Bruce's birthday. Was that yesterday? Hey, Amen. Actually, somebody sent me a picture. Will you get those lights real quick, uh, Brother Jonathan or somebody? They didn't send me a picture of you, Miss Padgett. I'm sorry, I'd be glad to put one up if you have one you want me to put up. But somebody, literally, somebody sent me this picture for Brother Bruce's birthday yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Well, at least you got your shirt and tie on, praise God. And he's ready to go. So happy birthday to all of you that are having a birthday. Praise the Lord for that. Are right, you guys ready to sing for us? Why don't y'all go ahead and get in place. You can open your Bibles tonight to Luke 14. Uh, just at different times in the message, I'll tell you, you put that picture up. Okay, Brother Tyler, that'll be... I'm just kidding. Don't do it. They won't nobody be listening. Luke 14, and also we'll go to John chapter 1. Luke 14 and John chapter 1. <laughs> Stormy waters in this life come rage around me every day. And I am near the gate. No evil fate can come and tempt me off the straight and narrow way. I am near the gate. I'm near the gate. I am near that leads to glory. To heaven first. That narrow way I'm passing through. A band of angels stand to stand greet me to my new home. I am near, near the gate. <clears throat> One day this ever-changing life will change forever for us all. I am near, I am near the gate. Each of us will choose the path where on the day that he will call. I am near, I am near the gate. Gate. I'm near the gate. gate. I am near the gate. That leads to glory. To heaven fair. That narrow way. way I'm passing, passing through. A band of angels angel stand to greet me in my new home. And I am near, I am near the, the gate. gate. When my body lies before the multitude to gather around, I am near. I am near the gate. I'll be going to a place where angels gather all around. I am near. I am near the gate. I'm near the gate. I am near that leads to glory, to heaven fair. That narrow way I'm passing through. A band of angels stand. I am near, I am near the gate. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With all these birthdays, I was just looking over there thinking, I believe his beard's about 50, <laughs> something like that. That beard had a birthday today, too. Good singing, boys. Thank you for being willing to stand up and sing for Jesus. I appreciate it. Seems like through the years, it's a little easier for ladies to get up and sing. When boys will stand up and sing, it's a big deal. And I appreciate them being willing to do that. Luke chapter 14, have we got me on this? Luke 14, fill the truck Sunday. Don't forget, we want to fill the bed of the truck with candy on Sunday. Try and help us with that. I'm excited to see it take place. So let's do it. Luke chapter 14, verse 16. Luke 14, 16. Mm -hmm. All right, Luke 14, verse 16. The Bible said... Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. 
And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. They began to make excuses one after another. Let's jump down to verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, go out quickly into the, lane, into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Brother Brian, do you care to run up into my office and get a handkerchief? There's several Bibles. It's in the front cover of one of them. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for the Word of God that we hold in our hands. I'm thankful, Lord, that we have confidence that this is not just a good book, but this is your Word, perfectly preserved and inspired. And Lord, we praise you for that, that we can learn from it and live by it, even in 2020. And I pray that you would encourage us tonight from the lessons of the Word of God. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said. Now here in these verses, the Lord is using once again a parable. Many of you have probably heard that definition, but uh, the old timers used to say a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And what it was is the Lord would often use, like we would use an illustration, he would use something that was in their everyday life as an example of how spiritual things were supposed to be. There was uh, one where he used the tares and the wheat and began to talk about, you know, people who were saved and lost and all mixed together. And how do you tell the difference? And they understood tares and wheat. They knew about that. They knew about the tares growing up among the wheat. And then one time he used uh, the building of a house. You remember the, the little kid song, the wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. That's a parable that the Lord used. They understood that. They had seen houses being built. They understood foundations were important. And so he's using this earthly thing to teach spiritual truths. He used the sowing of the seed. The most probably important parable there was the parable of the sower, where the sower went forth to sow, and he sowed, and some fell on good ground, but others fell on hard ground and, and thorny ground and all that other stuff. The Lord did that because they're very familiar with sowing and seed. They knew about that, and they could understand the spiritual truths that he was trying to tell them about giving out the gospel. He used leaven, the leaven in baking of bread, and how that, that was a picture of sin, that it only took a little bit of leaven to make that bread rise up, and he said, it only takes a little bit of sin to really mess up a life. And so the Lord would use these parables, these earthly stories that had a heavenly meaning. And he's done the same right here in Luke chapter 14. Now in this parable, we see a picture of a man's wedding feast for his son. And the Lord is going to use that picture, the man who has uh, made a great supper and made many for his son's wedding. He's going to use that to teach us uh, how things are supposed to function in the work of the Lord. Some things about how He wants us to be in the work of the Lord. Now, in order to understand it, we have to assume these types in the story. If you're looking at this parable, you should understand that the master in this is a type of God. The master represents the Lord. And then the house, the master's house, can represent the church. This is the house of God. This is the father's house, the master's house. And then the servants, that would represent us. This servant that he keeps talking to, to go out and compel people to come in, that would represent our part, the Christian, the those of us who are here in the work of the Lord. So with all that being said, by way of introduction, let me point out a couple of things. First of all, notice the master's desire, verse 16. Verse 16, it said that he, he told him to bade many, bade to invite. And so many had been invited in verse 16 and verse 23. At the end, it said that my house may be filled. And so we see a picture here, uh, this master in the parable who represents the Lord, he desired a crowd. He wanted a crowd. He didn't just want a few, he wanted many. He didn't want just some, he wanted the house to be filled. And so we understand from that that the Lord is interested in a crowd. And you know, as a church, I think we need to understand this. We need to take personal the idea that God is going to hold us accountable for empty space. Now, I understand we're in COVID times right now. We've got every other pew marked off. But I'm talking about when that's not going on and we're having regular church and then we look around and we still regularly have empty spaces. 
There is yet room, is what the verse said right here. This parable teaches us something that is the master's desire that we work to fill those empty spaces. And so the master's desire is to have a crowd. Now, let me just time out and say, we don't talk about numbers around here hardly ever. And I'm not talking about having a big crowd just so that we can brag about it. Thank you, Brother Brian. Or that we can say we got more than somebody else. I'm talking about having a crowd of people because God wants everybody. The Bible said it's not his will that any should perish. He wants everybody everywhere to hear the gospel. He wants everybody everywhere. In this story here, you have a a father, if you will, wanting people to be a part of his son's wedding. He wants to show off his son. He wants them to enjoy seeing his son's wedding. And our father, he wants everybody to know about his son. He wants everybody to come in here and find out what his son did. He wants them to know about Jesus. And so it's not an arrogant thing to say we want a crowd. It's not that we're going to promote it and say we had this many to the outside world or whatever. It's just that we need to understand the heart of God is that he bade many and that he was working to fill the house. I don't think you can get around that truth in this parable. Notice the master's desire. Number two, notice the master's demand. Because he had this desire, uh, he is then pushing the servant, and that's us, to try and bring people into his house. I pointed out already the word bade. There had already been some specifically invited. I don't know if they got a written invitation or if they got a personal knock on the door from this servant, but here's the deal. Somebody had already been personally invited. We want you to come to this feast. And then you see down in verse 16, uh, he says back to that servant, why don't you go and bring? By the way, notice that. Go and bring. That's a good, that's a good little piece of verse for the bus ministry, by the way. You say, well, I, mean, I don't know if we ought to. No, we're supposed to go and sometimes we're supposed to bring. That means put them in your vehicle and bring them. And so we see the heart of the master is he wants a crowd. Then we see his demand is for that servant to bathe many and then go and bring. In verse 21, he says, go out and compel. That word compel is a strong word. Plead, pull, drag. I mean, that's a strong word. And so the picture that we're getting here from this parable, this earthly story to teach a spiritual truth, is that the master, representing the Lord, is interested in everybody that can coming into his house, hearing about his son, and then he puts the responsibility on the servants, and that's us, to go and try to get them. By the way, it's not just the preacher. It's not just the staff guys, not just the deacons, not just the bus workers. It's all of us that are already here that are part of the Lord's work. We're supposed to be in this business of trying to get folks into his house. Notice the master's desire. Notice the master's demand. And then notice the master's decision. It's worth noting here that this, this father, this master in the story, he keeps expanding the reach of his directive. He starts with the servant, and here's what he says. You go and tell the ones we've already invited. That's who he says first. Go tell them it's ready. They've already been personally invited. The time has come. Now you go tell them to come to the feast. And so in verse 16, here's what you need to see. That it starts with inviting those they were already connected to. All right? Those people were already connected to this family. Let's think about uh, in our day, who do you invite to a wedding? For the most part, you invite family and close friends. People you're connected to. People that it would mean something to you for them to be there on that special day. And you show up at weddings like that for people that you are already connected to. I don't know that I've ever just went down the road and saw a wedding taking place and think, I just want to go in there to that wedding. Now, you might have done it because, you, you know, maybe you crashed the wedding or the party or whatever you're doing, but I don't think I have. I, I go to ones where I'm already connected. Well, that's the picture you have here at the beginning. There was a connection with them. They had been previously told about it. Now, we go out and invite them to come in. The problem is when he invited them, they wasn't interested in coming. They began to make excuse. And so the servant comes and says, hey, uh, we invited them all. We did everything we're supposed to do. Now I've gone back and told them that it's time. And they started making excuses. And so the house is not full. Well, then you see the desire of the master kick in again. And he's like, well, this is not acceptable. I, I want the house. I want my son. I want everybody that can. I want a multitude to hear about my son and see my son. And so he sends him back out. And now in verse 21, he expands the reaches of the directive. 
In verse 21, it goes from those who, by the way, you know, that's where our ministry should start too, with people we already are connected to. Family and friends, that's where it ought to start. It ought to start with those people that we are already attached to. I'll share more about that in just a minute. Then it expands in verse 21. He says, all right, so uh, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city. Now look at this. Bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Now, everybody look back at verse 16. Then said he unto him, a certain man made a great what? So food, right? Amen. Food. If you, he obviously had been in the ministry long enough to learn one thing. If you want a crowd, feed them and they'll come. If you feed them, they will come. And so he said there's going to be a supper. Well, he invited those who were already connected and they've made excuse to not come. And so now what I want you to see is this second crowd is he has included those who are in obvious need. Here's what he's thinking. The poor are not going to turn down this meal. The halt and the maim and the blind, they were outcast in these Bible days. Uh, many times they were sitting somewhere begging and just hoping somebody would show some kindness that they could get some food. And so here's what he says. He says, go out and find people that you know are in obvious need of a supper and certainly they'll come. You know, we, we do that sometimes. Someday, sometimes to a fault though. Sometimes to a fault that we, we see certain parts of society and we think, boy, they really need the Lord. But then you might see another part of society and think, not so much. You know, the rich, are, if they're not saved, they're just as lost as the poor, see. You understand that? And so he, he expands it. He says, here's what we'll do. If the ones we're already connected to are not interested enough to come, let's go out and find the people who are in obvious need. Now, we certainly should have that in our sights. People who are in need of the Lord. We ought to be going after them. But then he expands it again because in verse 23, uh, in verse 22, he says there's still room. So in verse 23, he expands it yet again and says, go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. You say, who's that? Just everybody. Anybody you see on the highways and hedges. So now it's not just family and friends that we already were connected to. And now it's not just those who are in obvious need. Now it's just anybody you see, see if they'll come and be here for my son's moment. And so the master's decision is he expanded the search, if you will, to try to get people in to his house. Turn over to John chapter 1 and let me just show you something that's on my heart for our church right now. In John chapter 1, we see this truth in action here in John chapter 1. This idea of the servants of the Lord bringing people to the Lord. Bringing people to Jesus. In John chapter 1, I want you to look and we'll read a few verses starting in verse 28. And what I want you to see, first of all, is you're going to see in verse 28 to 37, a public witness, all right? Now, we saw the parable, and the idea is that God wants His servants to be in the business of trying to get people in His house. We're going to see this in action now here in John chapter 1. First of all, in the form of a public witness. Look at verse 28. These things were done in in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. So John the Baptist... The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Wherefore I am come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it bowed upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw, and I bear record, that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, notice this public witness, Behold the Lamb of God! Exclamation point. He's lifting his voice right there. He's telling every, hey, hey, that's the one I've been telling you about. That's him right over there. That's Jesus. Now look at verse 37. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. And so I want to say to you, first of all, this is a public witness. This is a man standing out in a public place and he's lifting his voice for the purpose of telling people about Jesus. And let me say something to you. It works. 
Verse 37 very plainly says that two heard him and they followed Jesus. Two of John's disciples heard what John said about this new guy and they started following him. They started following Jesus. Well, preacher, I just don't know if that works anymore. No, here's what you're, you're doing. You're understanding that it doesn't work with everybody. Like the multitudes won't necessarily fall in line. Well, you know what? That's not what happened here. It doesn't say the whole crowd heard what John said and the whole crowd started following Jesus. It doesn't say that. It says two of them did. And so what we've got to understand is that uh, this picture here is that sometimes God will expect us to have a public witness. Man, our young people have been doing it the last several weeks because of COVID. They used to go door to door. They hadn't really started doing that yet. We think people are still nervous. So Brother Jason's been taking them up to the courthouse and he gets them all spread out. He lets the young ladies and the men, they'll sing. Some of the young guys will preach. Brother Jason will preach. They'll pass out tracts to those walking up and down the sidewalk. You know what that's called? It's called a public witness. Now, if you're not careful, you'll say, I don't know if that really does any good. Well, that's probably what they thought about John the Baptist right here. Because the multitude didn't fall in line. But listen to me, some did. It does work. It does work. Now, one of the tenets of the work of the Lord is that you must understand that. If you're going to stay faithful in the work of the Lord, you're going to have to understand this truth. Everybody will not receive it, but some will, and the some are worth it. That's what you're going to have to understand if you're going to stay in the work of the Lord. Any any part of the ministry, you're going to have to grab a hold of that truth. That everybody that you're trying to serve or minister to or teach or train, everybody's not going to get it, but some will get it. And you've got to determine in your heart that the some are worth it. You know what? We've run these buses for all these years. And you say, well, you know what? We've brought so many thousands of kids here and they didn't all stay. And some of them, they just came for the food and they just came for this and they just came for that. And I don't know if we ought to do it. Yeah, but what about the some? Hey, what about the some that did get saved? What about the some that are still in church, in our church and other churches around the country? What about the some? How many does it got to be before it's worth it? See, they won't all get it. When you make a public witness, they're not all going to get it. They're not all going to receive it, but some will. And what you got to understand is the some are worth it. We look at the Christian school, 25 years. Why? Certainly we've seen many walk across this platform at their graduation. Some of them been in the school their whole life. Some of them for many years. They walk across this platform at graduation and they turn that tassel and they walk off the platform and away from the Lord. Have we seen it? Yes. Many. But you know what else? We've seen some walk across this platform and turn their tassel and walk down and just keep walking with the Lord. As a matter of fact, a good number. You know what you say? It's worth it. It, The sum are worth it. Hey, you're teaching Sunday school and sometimes you'll think ain't none of these kids listening. Boy, none of them are getting it. Some of you that teach B Sunday school through the years at Bus Kids Sunday school, it's so rowdy and we're down here shouting it out and service is going long and you're about to kill three or four and go crazy and you go home frustrated. I miss church for this. None of them kids. Hey, listen, maybe they're not all getting it and maybe you don't think any are, but I'm telling you some of it is getting in. And what you've got to realize is the sum are worth it, whether it be Sunday school, whether it be the bus ministry. Hey, listen, missions. A preacher, I've read some stories about missionaries. And, and man, they went on deputation and they done this and that. And then after a few years, they came home. And you're right. Hey, you're right. That does happen. But it don't always happen like that. Come on. We were just talking the other day with uh, Brother Fisher. Me and I think Brother Matt, Brother Jason, we were at lunch. And we started talking about Brother Fisher's um, son, Jonathan, that is one of our missionaries in Alaska, he, he and his little wife were here, and she's very humble, very meek, and uh, I remember we were sitting at the table one day, and, and we were talking, and, and she said, or he said, that she grew up on the mission field, and I'm like, oh, is that right? And she said, yeah, yeah, and I, I said, are your parents still missionaries? She goes, oh, yeah, they're still there, and we talked a little bit more, and I said, where is it? And she said, Mexico City. Well, then, then Jonathan said, her daddy is Kevin Wynn. Now, that didn't mean anything to some of you, but to some of us, I'm like, whoa. You know who that is, don't you, Brother Ken? I think, I think right now on Wednesday night, they have 7,000 in their church. And on Sundays, they have 13 or 14,000. And they've got a Bible college. He's been there about 40 years. They got a Bible college, and from their Bible college, they have started. Brother Fisher told us, didn't he, Brother Matt, the other day, somewhere around 500 churches they've started from the people coming. 
that, that's her dad. I'm like, you didn't tell me you were a legend like that. You know, and she very, no, no, she was very humble. Hey, but listen, it don't always work, but sometimes it works. Hey, don't you wish you'd been one of them first churches to take him on for support? 40 years later, they've started 500 churches. I wish we'd have got in on that one. Come on. Well, I mean, hell, listen, you're going to be skeptical if you focus on the ones that don't get it. But what you got to understand is some will and some are worth it. That's what you got to get. You got to get a hold of that in all the areas. Giving out tracts. Well, I don't know about giving out tracts. Look, everybody's not going to read it and get saved. But what if one does? Then the one was worth every tract you ever passed out. If that one was your child, you'd be so glad somebody gave him a track. And so we see the public witness here of John. And, and we understand that right now, uh, you know, th this truth applies to that public witness of John's. Everybody didn't get it, but some did. We see that. And right now with COVID, some of these things are limited. We can't do maybe the same kind of public things that we've done in the past. And we're praying for innovative and creative ways to continue to function in the public realm. But that really leads me to the last point that I want you to see here in John chapter 1, that it's not just a public witness, but then we see examples here of the personal witness. Now look at verse 40. And then it says, One of the two which heard John speak followed him. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was, was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law, the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. And so John shows us the example, John the Baptist, of the public witness. And we need to believe in that. And as a church, do that from time to time. And by the way, you may need to do that from time to time individually. There may come moments in life where God says, you just need to say something. Brother Burton Gates, our missionary to Philadelphia, he says that God started dealing with him sometime back that on every plane, when they land and the plane pulls in and it slowly taxes in, as soon as that little thing goes ding and everybody stands up, he said the Lord dealt with him, and every time, as far as I know, he still does it. Every time that happens, he stands up and testifies about the Lord. Right when everybody's grabbing their stuff. You're thinking, oh, I hope the Lord don't ever ask me to do that. <laughs> but you know, there may come some moments where God asks you in a public setting to just say something about Jesus. You need to be ready to do it. Oh, it won't make a difference. It won't for everybody, but it might for some. But then there's this private witness. And I believe that this is what we need to turn up a notch in, in uh, our church right now, particularly in the COVID time. We need to get passionate about bringing people to church with us. Individually, just bringing people to church. Not the bus ministry, you know, not the, uh, not the other ministries, not soul winning, and we're going to do all that. We're supposed to do as best we can. I'm talking about just individuals bringing people to church. Here in this text, I'm almost done. Stay with me. Andrew first brought family. We saw that earlier. Everybody listen to me. Verse 41, it says that he first findeth his own brother Simon and brought him to the Lord. You don't know a ton about Andrew, but you know right here, this one he brought to Jesus. You know who he was? That's Peter. This is Peter. You know, the one guy that walked on water? Andrew brought him to Jesus, his brother. The guy who preached at Pentecost and 3,000 got saved. The guy that became the pastor or leader of the early church in Jerusalem. That's the guy that Andrew here, who just met the Lord, brought to Jesus. One-on-one. -on -one. He got saved. His burden was for his family. He brought Peter to the Lord. Peter got saved. Listen, listen to me now. Andrew changed the world by bringing his brother to Jesus. Now we would say... Peter was used to change the world, and certainly that's true. And he had to make his choice and give his life to Jesus. But don't miss that Andrew changed the world because he brought Peter to Jesus. That personal witness, it begins with family. Let me ask you this question. Uh, do you have some family member that doesn't come to church that you've talked to before and they act like they're not interested? Have you considered that maybe 2020 has affected how they think? 
Have you considered that that hard family member that never was interested in the Lord, that maybe everything that's going on in the world uh, might make them a little more likely to listen than they used to be? Instead of just saying, I've tried before and I'm not going to, why don't you understand that we're all living in different times? And I believe there's a good chance that lost people and backslid people, they're sitting at home sometimes thinking, what in the world is going on? And so maybe it'd be a great time for us to start inviting family to come to church that don't come. Well, I've tried before. Well, try again. Tell them the world's coming to an end. It is. Crazy times, man. I wonder how many of them are wondering that stuff. I wonder how many of them would like to ask you about some of that stuff. But they're not going to start it. Well, but I've invited them before, but this is 2020. Come on. Hadn't it changed the way we think about stuff? Hasn't it made you back up and think, whoa, what in the world? You know, a little bit ago, just a few weeks ago, there was multitudes of Middle Eastern countries making peace with Israel. Now, if you didn't stop and go, whoa, now wait a minute. Whoa, is this, is this right? Is this what's supposed to happen? What? Now, by the way, the Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So it's a good thing. But it certainly should have made all of us at least, anytime it's Israel, it ought to make you go, whoa, wait a minute. What's going on? Let me pay it. Because God's paying attention to Israel. He's not done working with them. Everything's working to put them in a place so that during the tribulation, he can bring them back to himself. Come on. Listen, let me just throw this out for you. That sounded like there was a baby right here, right there. <laughs> I thought somebody has lost one and it's in the choir. It's probably Canaan back there. Listen, you know that I'm just, I don't even really wish this was on the internet, but I'm just going to tell you because I thought it. Jared Kushner is the one that's helping negotiate all these. That's the president's son-in-law who is a Jew. <laughs> if he has a car wreck and hurts his right eye and his right hand, it is on is all I can tell you. It is all. Now, if you don't know what that means, it's a little Bible thing there. But uh, all of that made me go, whoa. You know, it should. Israel stuff should make you go, whoa, whoa, what's going on? And a bunch of it should really make you go, oh, what's going on? Well, don't you reckon the lost world, particularly, what about backslidden people who have been around enough church to know that Israel's a big deal? You reckon any of them are wondering? Maybe they'd like to ask us about it. You know what we should do? We should check on them again. And so the personal witness, Andrew, brought family. And then it didn't stop there. Philip brought a friend. In verse 45 to 46, some people believe that they're brothers. It doesn't say that anywhere. It appears more likely to me that they were friends. Philip findeth Nathaniel. He findeth him. And so he, uh, he goes and he begins to talk to this guy. And they'd obviously talked about spiritual things before. And he brings him to the Lord. And that's what I really want to impart to us tonight. Let's get better at friends bringing friends. Let's get better at that. All of us. Not the kids, you know, not the singles, us, adults. We that have been saved the longest. We that know the most about how wonderful God is. Let's find somebody that don't go to church and bring them. By the way, it's so exciting when it works, when they come. Uh, we're, Brother Ray, can I, can I mention that, John's deal? I don't know if he's watching or anything, but all right. Brother Ray texted us the other day, and Brother Matt mentioned it the other night in the service, that he's got a, a guy he's been talking to for a long time, Brother Matt, and he'd been praying about the guy for a good while. And uh, he texted us and said, hey, my friend John, and he mentioned that he's sick and this, that, and the other is going on in his life. And he said, he's supposed to come. He asked us to pray, said so he didn't know if he'd ever been saved, and said, he's supposed to come. So we started praying. I forwarded it to the staff guys, and they started praying. In just a little bit, he sent me a, a screenshot of the text conversation where he's saying, basically, I'm coming. Well, I want you to know something. When I got that one, I got excited. Me and Brother Matt, he got excited. The staff guys, we got excited. Hey, and then he did come. And so it's like, Psh, he's here. That's him. And it's, it, you know what it was? It was exciting. You say, why? Because we didn't know what God maybe was going to do. And we were pumped up about it. And listen, that'll happen to all of us if we'll bring somebody. 
There's hardly anything more exciting than somebody you've been praying for and talking to and working on coming to church and you thinking, oh, oh they might get saved. or Oh, this might be. The... I remember when my dad was away from God and we would beg him to come to certain things if he ever attended. And sometimes it was an Easter service or a Christmas play or something like that. It didn't matter what he was coming for. If he walked in the building, it was like, oh, it just spread like, like that. Elbert Shirley, no middle name. I just think it's strange that he don't have a middle name. They would say, Elbert's here, Elbert's here, Elbert's here. It would just spread. You know what that was? There was an excitement and a burden all at the same time. But it was like maybe this is the service. I've heard them talk about when Tater Sheehan got saved in a tent meeting right down here. I guarantee you when he walked in, it started a buzz in that place, didn't it? Oh, he's here, he's here, he's here. Listen, that still happens if we bring him. We got to bring him. And so it started with the family, but then it's just a friend. As a matter of fact, I, I believe it was a co-worker. I believe there's a real good chance Philip and Nathaniel both were from the same part of the country and both seemed to be fishermen, just like uh, Andrew and Peter. And so there's a real good chance that they worked together, or at the very least, because they lived in the same area and worked in the same field, they saw each other regularly and maybe did business together. And so... Philip gets, meets the Lord and his first thought is, man, I got to go, go tell my buddy I work with. How old oh, oh, Nathaniel I do business with. Hey, who is, it that, who is it that you work with or that you do business with that needs to be invited to church? Who is it? Right now, who is it? There's somebody. Well, let's invite them. You say, but it's COVID. They're not going to come. They might. I mean, if you're sitting right across from them at work every day, y'all are both cheating and pulling your mask down when nobody's looking. Look, if they feel uncomfortable, you tell them you'll wear a mask while they're here with you. Amen. We just need them to walk in here. Hey, and then text some of us and say, hey, look, I've got a friend from work. I'm not sure if she's saved. She said she would come with me. Pray she will. I'm going to text her Saturday night. Hey, then Sunday morning, if she's coming, text us that. We'll put it out. And you know what will happen? There will be this excitement in here. Everyone will be like, is that her? Is that her? Now don't, you know, everybody just go stand around them and stare at them. <laughs> Are you the one? No, don't do that. But come on, you've been in those services where that person everybody's thinking about comes. It's just, it's a thrill to think, oh, this might be. You say, well, what if it's not the time? It, it's still exciting. Still exciting. I believe John went to the altar in that service. Glory to God. That means God's speaking to him. That's a good sign. And so we need to get to where we're friends bringing friends. People are confused right now. Some are afraid right now. Many are searching for answers. It's a good time to try and get them to come and hear. You know what a lot of them need to hear? That God's in control. They need to hear that. And that God wants to help them. You know what some of them need? Peace. They are just tore up. They need to know there's a God in heaven that can speak peace to their soul. Well, they're not going to get it on social media. Amen. I know occasionally people post decent stuff, but let's be honest. Let's just go ahead and confess. You don't even read to the end the good posts, hardly ever. I'm right. I'm right about that. But that crazy stuff, you'll just sit and watch it all the way till that little ball goes all the way to the end of the video. And then you'll go, and watch it again because you can't believe what you just saw. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that how our, you know what that is? That's flesh. That's flesh. Flesh is drawn to the negative. So, look, I get it. But they're not going to get their peace and hope on social media hardly ever. Now, we should flood it, put all the good on it we can. But what they really need is a friend, a coworker, a neighbor to say, why don't you come to church with me and hear about God and let him give you peace. You know, I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of them, they're trying to figure out, are we nearing the end? Well, you know what they need to know? If we are, they better make sure they're born again. Yes. We can explain to them, hey, we do believe we're nearing the end, and when it comes, this is what happens. And this is what you must know. You say, but I don't know if they'll listen. You're right, a bunch of them won't. But what if one does? Hey, what if you bring Peter to the Lord? Well, I mean, I don't know if I could ever shake the world. Neither did Andrew, but his brother that he brought to Jesus changed the world. 
By the way, Andrew brought a lot of others to the Lord. He was always doing it. That little lad that gave his lunch to Jesus that everybody knows about, you know who brought him to Jesus? Andrew did. See, Andrew's one of them that at the judgment seat of Christ is going to be in the front of the line and everybody's going to be going, what's he doing up there? And the Lord's going to start listing not all that he did, but all that everybody did that he brought to Jesus. And so it's not about what we can do, but we just need to get them to the Lord. So would you pray tonight, I'm about to pray, and ask God to help you get somebody to come to church. Let's just pray that. Lord, help me to get somebody to come to church that's not going. I'm not talking about, listen, your sainted grandmother that's been saved for 50 years and loves God more than you. And you just say, Granny, they're trying to get us to bring visitors. Will you come to church with me? Now, I'm glad if your granny comes, praise the Lord for her. But that ain't who we're talking about, all right? We're talking about somebody that doesn't go, that needs the Lord. I'm talking about the people that maybe like, Philip, you do business with. You say, well, I mean, I don't know if in my business, well, let me just get, let me just get hateful for a second. Don't you pray for the Lord to bless you in your business? So you're going to pray for the Lord to bless you all the time in your business, but then you can't ever do His work during your business? That seems a little, that seems a little weak on your part, doesn't it? Come on. Now, I'm not talking about when you work for a big company and you've got limitations, there's only certain things you can do. But let's be sure too, by the way, that you know that's the truth and you're not just telling yourself that so you don't have to. Because we all are flesh. And look, I'm, I know it sounds like I'm yelling at you, but I have flesh. I turn the car around all the time because I should have stopped the first time by and gave them a track. I do it all the time. And I, I hate it. I hate that I'm still so stinking carnal that I have to discuss it with myself on down the road and then turn the car around because I get into that, I always get to that point of, you know that what in your flesh that just said stop and give them a track. And you're like, well, yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> so then who was it? Well, it was the Lord. <laughs> Click. <laughs> I wish it wasn't like that, but it is. I have it, so I get it. But look, we're nearing the end. We got to get past that and invite them. And so let's pray and ask the Lord, who, who? And you might not know them yet. You may meet them tomorrow. But let's be open to it. Heavenly Father, I pray that as Christians who have been blessed to know the truth, who have been blessed to know Jesus and have experienced the blessings and the grace of God and the peace that God can give, I pray that you would put a burden on us to do as we have seen, first of all, in that first parable, Lord, that, that your heart is to fill the house. And then, Lord, we see the examples of others here in the Word of God that they brought people to you. And, Lord, we need to start it with our own family members. If we've got family members that don't go to church, Lord, help us to try again to get them to come. And then, Lord, I pray that you would help us to go beyond that, that we would begin to look not only at friends, but then even people we...